Good afternoon and welcome to All Hallows Episcopal Church on this, what is today, Wednesday. On this Wednesday, um, November 9th, we are thrilled that you are with us. I'm thrilled to have Karen Wilson with us this morning. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. We are, of course, doing Noonday Prayer and we are using Daily Prayer for All Seasons, the service that is specified for the time of the day when we start to to maybe lag a little bit. Um, and we need to take some time to recenter ourselves. It's called perseverance and renewal. As we pause to feed our bodies in the middle of the day, we pause also to feed our souls by vowing again to live faithfully. My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Grant us, O God, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We take a moment to praise God. Peace before us, peace behind us, peace under our feet. Peace within us, peace over us, let all around us be peace. Light before us, light behind us, light under our feet. Light within us, light over us, let all around us be light. Love before us, love behind us, love under our feet. Love within us, love over us, let all around us be love. Christ before us, Christ behind us, Christ under our feet, Christ within us, Christ over us, let all around us be Christ. Today, um, there was nobody in the great cloud of witnesses that we were to talk about, um, so I made the executive decision to transfer Friday's person, who is Martin Bishop of Tours, uh, to today. So Martin, Bishop of Tours, or Martin of Tours, as he is known, um, is the one of the patron saints of France. He was born about 330 um, in modern-day Hungary. Uh, he was uh, a Roman uh, soldier, and he traveled about Europe, and he finally settled in Poitiers, um, where Bishop Hillary uh, was, and he had admired them. <clears throat> According to the old legend, uh, Martin, while he was still a catechumen, had not even been baptized yet, was approached by a poor man who asked for alms in the name of Christ. And Martin, drawing his sword, cut off part of his military cloak and gave it to the beggar. On the following night, Jesus appeared to Martin, clothed in half a cloak. And said to the saints and angels surrounding him, Martin, a simple catechumen, covered me with his garment. Hillary ordained Martin as a priest sometime between 350 and 353. And Martin was inspired by the monastic movement that was coming out of Egypt at the time. And he uh, established a hermitage near Ligue, near a place in France that I can't pronounce. Um, he was elected, much to his dismay, as Bishop of Tours in 372, and he agreed only to serve if he could keep up his ascetic lifestyle. He had great influence on the development of Celtic monasticism in his time, and the oldest church in Canterbury predates the Anglo-Saxon invasions, and it is dedicated to St. Martin. Martin was unpopular with many of the other bishops, both because of his manner of life and because of his strong opposition to their violent repression of heresy. He was a diligent missionary to the pagans that lived near them um, and a defender of the poor and the helpless. He died in 397, and there is a shrine at Tours that, you, that became a popular and is still a popular uh, pilgrimage site. And I think Karen has a piece of scripture for us today. I do. This is from 1 Timothy 3. I hope to come to you soon, 
but I am writing these instructions to you so that if I'm delayed, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and support of the truth. Without any doubt, the mystery of godliness is great. He was revealed in flesh, vindicated in spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among Gentiles, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory. So in this moment of meditation, I invite you to sit comfortably and try to empty your mind of all the things, well, that are running around in there. I know my brain is full of chatter, but in this moment, if we can just breathe easy and let our shoulders drop. <sighs> this reading from 1 Timothy, I imagine is very much like the word proclaimed by Martin of Tours. If we want to boil down the mystery of God, into that that 30 second elevator pitch that you you get to give people when you when you greet them unexpectedly or or greet them in the elevator to tell them about about something that you care about there it is jesus was revealed in the flesh vindicated by the spirit seen by the angels proclaimed among the gentiles believed in throughout the world and taken up in glory I mean, it doesn't get much simpler than that. And we tend to try to overcomplicate things. Um, we want, and I know I'm guilty of this, when, when three words would answer a question, I might use 15. Um, but in this, in this letter to Timothy, it is right there. All the things Jesus was incarnated, God incarnated to earth, was, we know was crucified, but was resurrected and taken up in glory. It wasn't just to the Jews that, that Jesus came, it was to everybody. And this belief expanded so quickly that it reminds us that that something extraordinary went on, even to the point where Martin of Tours is meeting people that had never heard the word, and he tells them this, and they believe. So in our moment of meditation, I just want us to spend some time thinking about this mystery of God as revealed in Jesus and is explained through 1 Timothy. And I'll read it one more time for us. He was revealed in flesh, vindicated in spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among Gentiles, believed in throughout the world, and taken up in glory. Amen. We continue with our prayers. In our daily tasks, God's God surrounds us. In our successes and failures, God surrounds us. In our joys and sorrows, God surrounds us. With the healing of our world, God surrounds us. We pray for all who celebrate or seek or need God's love. Especially do we remember all those on the All Hallows Parish prayer list for Martha, 
Larry, Russ, Amaya, Imogen, William, for Jennifer, Mike, Bill, David, Linda, Christine, Judy, Charlotte, Paul, Bill, Ian, for Donald, Karen, Helen, Golzar, Nargis, Anselm, Brishna, Bob, for Cindy, Jackson, Ben, the Furrier family, Phyllis, Jack, Bob, Robin, and Patricia, and for those that we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts or in the comments section. For Nancy. We pray for those who are struggling with their mental health. We pray for caregivers of all kinds. We pray for those who are hungry or homeless or living on the edge of housing and food sufficiency. We pray for the unemployed, those who are underemployed, We pray for those facing any adversity. We pray for our world, for an ending of violence everywhere, especially for an end to the war in Ukraine. We pray for our local communities of Abington, Cheltenham, Jenkintown, and Wincote. We pray for an end of gun violence in our communities, and we pray for all those who are trapped by addiction. We pray for the church, the Church Universal, the Anglican Communion, our Diocese of Pennsylvania, our deanery, and this parish, all hallows, that we may do all that we can to be a light and to bring people to know that they are loved and valued and to show them the love of Christ. Thank you for the opportunity to partner with the Curtis Institute of Music to bring the beauty of music into our community and for the upcoming concert. And we remember all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, O God, mm -hmm. especially do we lift up all the saints of all hallows. And I lift up my friend Jansen. And we give thanks. We give thanks for the beauty of this day, for the seasonable weather, for birthdays and anniversaries and new opportunities or children and grandchildren. And we give thanks for all the joys that come into our lives and the blessings that we see and the blessings that we don't even notice, but we know we receive them and we give you thanks and praise, O oh God. We give thanks for the people of this parish and their dedication and commitment and love of community. All these prayers we lift up to you, O oh God, in the sure and certain hope that you hear and will act as is best for us. Amen. As God, as we continue our day, God surrounds us with hope. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Lord God of hosts, you clothed your servant Martin the soldier with the spirit of sacrifice and set him as a bishop in your church to be a defender of the Catholic faith. Give us grace to follow in his holy steps that at the last we may be found clothed with righteousness in the dwellings of peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O Holy One, we keep still. We listen. We hear you say, I am your strength. And we say to you, you are our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. My grace is sufficient for you. For power is made perfect in weakness. Thank you for joining us today for Noonday Prayer. We will be back again tomorrow with Noonday Prayer. Um, also tomorrow at noon is uh, Holy Eucharist in the church, and service on Sunday is at 10 o'clock. We hope to see you then. There are so many things uh, that are happening here. A reminder that our next concert in the Curtis Organ Scholars Concert Series will be November 19th. Uh, navigate to our website at allhallowswincote.org and you can find information on how to secure your free tickets. All are welcome here always. Thank you to Karen for being here today. Um, it is a joy to pray with you. Hope you have a marvelous day. Be at peace.